Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We have been studying the subject of healing, and we're looking at the proofs and evidences that it is absolutely, positively, unquestionably, undeniably God's will for you to be healed. And in the last few days, we've talked about specific diseases that are named in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that are listed as part of the curse or under the curse, the curse of the law. And we saw that in Galatians 3.13, we are redeemed from the curse of the law. And in Romans 8.2, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And the law of sin and death is the same as the curse of sin and death and the curse of the law. So we are free from all of the curse through Christ Jesus. And so we were looking in Deuteronomy 28 and we were looking at this detailed list and description of sicknesses, diseases, and other conditions, even emotional and mental problems that were listed and then connecting it to Galatians 3.13 and Romans 8.2, we know we are redeemed from these diseases and conditions. Now today, I want us to look at something else. And that is, I'm going to show you promises in the Bible for specific parts of the body. Promises in the Bible for specific parts of the body and um, conditions of specific parts of the body. And these are promises. So these are promises that you can claim. You can lay hold of them with your faith and believe you receive these promises. So these are all promises for parts of the body. And this is, again, another proof and evidence that God wants you healed. So I hope that by now, if you've been listening to this program for the last few months, we have totally blown out of the water and demolished any idea or thought that perhaps God might want you to be sick. That is absolutely a lie. There is no scriptural foundation for that. And we've been giving you so many proofs and evidences. I've already probably, I think, given at least 30 different specific proofs and evidences from the Bible that just obliterate, blow that idea out of the water, demolish it. There is no way God could want you to be sick. When you look at all the scriptures in the Bible and all the different ways God looks at us, et cetera, et cetera. There's no way you could ever think God wants you sick. No, on the contrary, God wants you healed all the time, every day. So today let's look at these scripture promises for different parts of the body or specific parts of the body. First of all, let's look at promises for skin, for skin. So if you have any skin problem of any kind, there are promises for your skin. Job 33, 25, Job 33, 25. It says his flesh shall be fresher than a child's his flesh shall be fresher than a child's now of course when we think of children and especially small children babies and infants their skin is so soft and so smooth and so rich that's the kind of flesh that god wants you to have Job 33, 25, his flesh shall be fresher than a child's. So you can claim this promise if you have a skin problem. 
and say, Lord, I believe Job 33, 25, that my flesh shall be fresher than a child's. Then in Matthew 11, verse 5, actually, let's start in verse 4. Now, this is when Jesus spoke to John's disciples, because John's disciples came and asked Jesus, are you the one who was to come? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus answered, go back and report to John what you hear and see. And in verse five, I'll just pull this one phrase. Those who have leprosy are cured. Those who have leprosy are cured. Now, let me point out to you. I even have a footnote in my Bible. If you have footnotes in your Bible, it will probably say the same thing. There's a footnote by the word leprosy. And it actually says the Greek word used for this is the Greek word was used for various diseases affecting the skin. So where it says leprosy, it's not just leprosy as we know it. It actually says in the footnote beside the word leprosy, the Greek word that is translated leprosy was actually used for various diseases affecting the skin. Various diseases affecting the skin. I would recommend you even translate it that way. Write it in if you are particularly um, needing a healing of your skin, that you would translate it that way and read it like this. Those who have... Various diseases affecting the skin are cured. Those who have various diseases affecting the skin are cured. You can take that promise if you have a skin problem and say, Lord, I take Matthew 11, 5 which says those who have various diseases affecting the skin are cured. And I believe I receive that my skin is cured. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now promises for strong bones, healthy bones in Psalm 34, 20 regarding your bones. If you have a bone disease, if you have weak bones, Psalm 34, 20, he protects all his bones. He protects all his bones. And Isaiah 58, 11, Isaiah 58, 11, the new revised standard version says it like this. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. Make your bones strong. Now, if you have any bone disease, any condition of the bones that is a problem, any weakness of the bones, you can claim this promise that he will make your bones strong. And then there's another one. Actually, I think of this as really good for bones that are weak. And even when there's chemotherapy and it um, it weakens you, Proverbs chapter three, verses five through eight. Let me just read. Um, OK, five through eight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding Verse six, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Verse eight, this will bring health to your body. Now, that's just a promise for general health to your whole body. So this here, this first part, this first phrase in verse eight Proverbs 3, 8. It's an excellent promise to use for health for your whole body. It says this will bring health to your to your body and nourishment to your bones, nourishment to your bones. 
Other translations of that, for example, the King James Version says marrow to your bones. So that is a good promise if you um, are having a problem with bone marrow. In the King James translation, it says marrow to your bones. Another translation, this is really good. The BBE, Basic Bible and English translation, says new life to your bones. So if you've been taking chemotherapy or radiation or any, if there's anything else that is causing a weakening to your bones, then you can take this promise, new life to your bones. Another translation says strength to your bones. The Darby says moisture for thy bones. The English standard says refreshment to your bones. So there are these different translations of that Hebrew word, nourishment, marrow, new life, strength, and moisture and refreshment to your bones. That's different ways that that Hebrew word is translated. And so if you need any strengthening to your bones, this is a great scripture, Proverbs 3, 8. That's the last half of the verse. However, the first half of the verse says in the NIV, this will bring health to your body. Now, there are several translations that say your navel, However, that is also then representative of or symbolic of your body, your flesh. And so there it says in the New English translation, it says this will bring healing to your body. This will bring healing to your body. The NIV, this will bring health to your body. So all of these show that your whole body can be healed and have health. And the key is the first part, verse five, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. And then do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and shun evil. So these are promises for general health to your whole body. And then also specifically health, nourishment, refreshment, strength, moisture to your bones. Then another uh, part of the body is your blood, blood. Let's look at the promises for your blood in Joel chapter three, verse 21, Joel three twenty one, for I will cleanse their blood. I will cleanse their blood. If there is any problem, any blood disease, you can claim a cleansing of your blood. And then Leviticus 17, 11, Leviticus 17, 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now I cross reference that promise to John chapter six. So I link Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood to John six. And this is where Jesus preached that sermon about eating his flesh, drinking his blood that caused many, many of his followers to stop following him. And many turned away and stopped following because they said, this is a hard teaching. Who can take it? Well, this is the sermon where he come, he comes and he says, for example, in John six fifty one. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Verse 53, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Verse 54. Now get this. This is one. You will cross reference verse 54, John 6, 54 with Leviticus 17, 11. Whoever 
eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Now we know that that is actually the communion, the Lord's Supper, where we take the bread and juice. We take the bread and juice uh, uh, representing the Lord's body and representing the Lord's blood. We understand that now revelation was given to the church to know that at the last supper, he said, take and eat this bread. This is my flesh. And then he took the cup in his hand and he said, drink this. This is my blood. Matthew 26 verses 26 through 28. He says he, he took the bread and he said, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and offered it to them. And verse 28, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. So he told us then at the Lord's Supper, the last supper before his betrayal, that the bread would be his, the representation of his body and the juice would be the representation of his blood. So we see that we can actually literally drink his blood in symbol by drinking and eating the Lord's Supper. And so you connect that to John 6, 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. My blood, this cup is my blood. Well, then when you look at it like this, Leviticus seventeen eleven, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And Jesus said, take this cup and drink it. It's my blood. And if you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have eternal life. What is that? You are getting resurrection life in you when you partake of the Lord's Supper, the communion. When you take the juice and the bread, you are actually partaking of the Lord's blood and body, and you are then intaking into your body resurrection life, eternal life, which is that Zoe life. Remember, we described that it is life that is vigorous and healthy and full It is that vigorous Zoe life. It is resurrection life. It is the life of Jesus himself. So when you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you get his life in you because the life of the flesh is in the blood. His life is in his blood. His life is in his blood. So when you drink his blood represented by the juice of the Lord's Supper, then you are drinking his blood and you have, as it says in John six fifty four, you have Zoe life. So the Lord's Supper, as I've said before, is a powerful weapon for receiving healing in your body. You need to believe it. And most Christians are taking the Lord's Supper with no knowledge that there is healing in the blood and body of Jesus. But you need to understand that from now on, every time you take the Lord's Supper, know that there is healing in the blood and body of Jesus because his life, his resurrection life is in that blood and you are intaking it, eating it, and you are then receiving eternal life or Zoe life, his life into your body. And by taking these scriptures and connecting Leviticus 17, 11, John 6, 54, and then the passage of the Lord's Supper, Matthew 26, verses 26 to 28. By taking these scriptures, then you can also believe that God's life is in your blood. God's life is in your blood. I also pray this when I pray for people who need healing in their blood. I pray for a blood transfusion of the blood of Jesus 
into their body. You can ask God for a blood transfusion. And let me share a testimony of that. I have recently heard this testimony about a woman who had blood, a blood disease, a very serious blood disease. I, if I remember correctly, I think it was cancer, but um, I'm not exactly sure, but a very serious blood disease. And she went to a healing service. There was an anointing for healing present and she had hands laid on her and she believed she received. So she received it by faith. Then she went home feeling no different. She didn't see anything different. She didn't feel anything different immediately, but it was either that night or a couple nights later within one or two nights she woke up in the morning. That was either the next day or a couple days later. She woke up in the morning and her bed sheets were covered in blood. Just soaked, drenched in blood, her bed sheets. And so her daughter was with her, saw the blood on the blood sheets, uh, the, the blood on the bed sheets. And thought, well, but the mother, the woman woke up and she felt fine. She felt, she said, I've never felt any better. I feel fine. I feel like I'm healed. And so the daughter said, well, we better take you to the doctor and get a test to understand why is all this blood in your bed on the bed sheets. So they took her to the doctor and the doctor did a test of her blood and said, there is not one trace of this disease in your blood. It is completely gone. All of it. And it was very serious. She was near the point of death. And that blood disease was completely gone. Not one trace of it. He said, you have perfect blood. What happened? Well, actually, God did a blood transfusion. And to make it obvious, they, he, he did it so that the old blood was soaked in her bed sheets and they took the bed sheets to the doctor and they took a sample of the blood that was soaked in the blood sheets, uh, in the bed sheets. Excuse me. I keep saying that wrong. The blood that was in the bed sheets. And they tested it and it was full of the disease. It was full of the disease. So the blood that was in the bed sheets was full of the disease, but the blood that was in her body had no trace of disease, nothing perfect blood. So God had actually done a miracle giving her a blood transfusion, but made it so obvious that it could not be denied that it was a miracle that he left the evidence and the trace of the evidence was the blood filled in the blood, the bed sheets. And the evidence was that that blood was still full of disease. But when they tested her body and the blood in her body, it was perfect, completely clean. So there was a testimony. So that's why I'm saying, God, if you need a blood transfusion, God does blood transfusions. You can believe God for a blood transfusion. And that was a miracle a testimony, a true, true case, a true testimony of how God gave this woman who was near death with this blood disease, gave her a blood transfusion, gave her brand new, perfect, healthy blood. She woke up feeling perfect, healthy and strong. She said, I feel fine. I've never felt better in my life. Glory to God. So you can get a blood transfusion and the life of Jesus is in his blood so that when you take the Lord's supper, you can receive the life of Jesus into your blood and into your body. Hallelujah. 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 And again, let me remind you, Joel three, 
21, for I will cleanse their blood. So these are specific scriptures that you can use to believe God for healing of your blood. If you need a blood healing. So we've talked about skin. We've talked about bones and we've talked about blood. I'm running out of time, but in these last few, uh, this last minute, let me just start with the next category and I will pick it up here tomorrow. And that is scriptures for your heart, your heart. If you need healing in your heart and Notice that you can take it as both physical and emotional because the heart also represents the heart of your emotions, the heart of your soul, and also it's the heart of your body. So you can take it either for your body or your emotions. Let me give you this one scripture, Psalm 27, 14, Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage He shall strengthen your heart. He will strengthen your heart. If you have a weak heart, if you have irregular heartbeats, you can say the Lord will strengthen my heart. Well, in the name of Jesus, I command a healing anointing to go into your body right now. In Jesus name, take your healing, receive it by faith in Jesus name. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.